It's time for the absolutely... I'm on my way! Completely... I'm almost there! Random... Why are there so many stairs? Podcast... Oh, jeez! <clears throat> With Andrew Rhodes. Welcome, everybody, to the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. My name's Andrew Rhodes. I'm your host, as always, this week with the uh, small bit of tea I have left here as I'm getting into this. I've been pretty thirsty today. Uh, but anyway, uh, welcome to the podcast this week for Saturday, May 9th, 2020. Yes, we are still in the horrible year of Jumanji here. <laughs> no, so, seriously, somebody's been playing another round of Jumanji. It's just not getting any better. Uh, I mean, I mean, first we had uh, the full moon that came that one week, uh, the pandemic that created the massive outbreak, and now we have murder wasps uh, and, murder, and murder hornets. So yeah, this is not going well here. Somebody's playing another round of Jumanji. Damn it, you're not supposed to take turns anymore. When the board gets destroyed, that's when the game is done. <laughs> Uh, but then again, you know, who knows? But anyway, uh, what do I got to talk about this week? Believe it or not, Funimation is going to be trying an online animation convention. Or basically an online anime convention. This actually has me intrigued. Hey, do you have a bunch of meetings that you have to have right now because of, you know, everything that's going on? Good news! There's some meeting backgrounds to kind of spice them up a bit. You know, if you're tired of staring at that boring one that you've been looking at for so long. Uh, speaking of Funimation, they're expanding their anime catalog with some NIS America titles. Interesting. Uh, with Star Wars Day this past Monday, as of this recording, this is an interesting one. That, I guess fans recreated some of the scenes using action figures. You know, the things that they would never let off their shelves. Yeah, those things. And, of course, what podcast of mine would not be complete, at least perfectly, mind you, without some type of a Pokemon topic or something Pokemon-related? Well, the Pokemon animator, um, Saki Iwane, is set to launch a YouTube channel about animation. This is actually pretty cool. Now, let's just watch it only be in Japan and really screw us over. All that this week and more on the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. But hey, you know the song and dance by now. I I'm sure you do. I do it every week. Check out my eBay page, A-R-H-O-A-D-S hyphen 2012 on eBay. Wide variety of stuff. Uh, come check it out. Let me know what you think. If something tickles your fancy, feel free to pick it up. Uh, yes, as of right now, there are a bit of shipping delays that are outside of my hands. I take it down to the post office as quickly as I can. And somewhere along the line, it's up to the Postal Service to deliver it. It happens. So, uh, swing by my eBay page. Let me know what you think of it. It's A-R-H-O-A-D-S hyphen 2012, all lowercase, by the way. And hey, while you're fancying a surf on the information superhighway, why don't you swing by Twitter and my Twitter page, at Otaku Roads, and shoot the shit with me a little bit if you feel like it. Or check on out over to Facebook at the official Web Designer 18 Facebook page. Or better yet, just hit the subscribe button right here on the Web Designer 18 YouTube channel and ring the bell notification icon to be notified when new videos drop from yours truly. Remember, I do monthly Q&A videos, rant videos, discussion videos, reviews, and the podcast you're currently listening to. All that and more can be found here on my channel, Web Designer 18 on YouTube. Look, I have to plug myself, otherwise people won't know where to go. It's it's a thing. Alright, so let's go into how my week went. So how was your week, Andrew? Um, meh. I mean, it's the same old, same old, uh, you know, as it has been. Uh, basically, still going off of everything that happened last week. Uh, dealing with the fallout of that. Uh, had some little issues this week that I don't really want to go into. Uh, but yeah, all in all, basically, same old, same old, just copy and paste at this point. Uh, finished watching Till Death, started it last week, and watched it pretty much through to, I want to say, like, Thursday night? Like, Thursday, I think we finished it? Uh, like, no, Wednesday or Thursday, I think we finished it, and then we were watching some, uh, War at Home on YouTube, which is actually a pretty cool show. I liked both of them, they were both on Fox. 
I did uh, two RAND videos. No, three RAND videos. I think I did three this week. Uh, I think I did one Monday, and I put one up Wednesday and one Thursday. So, yeah, I think I did three RAND videos this week. Uh, so that's first. I watched the uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi versus uh, Kakashi Hatake death battle. And I was right! The Jedi won. <laughs> I was right. The Jedi won. Uh, so, yes! Woohoo! I love that. I love it when I'm actually right. I uh, got into a nice little nerd fight over my uh, Ben 10 versus Green Lantern video. Uh, still dealing with that, which is actually pretty cool. At least I'm pretty sure that's done. I'm hoping it's done. I didn't see any new comments, but I'm going to have to check because I'm not getting the notifications from YouTube. Uh, but I am excited, though, for the next death battle. It's actually a one of my favorite uh, Nickelodeon cartoons back from the uh, 2000s. Danny Phantom is taking on American Dragon Jake Long. Now, I am a big Danny Phantom fan. I, I, I honestly am. Next to Fairly Odd Parents, Pre, Sparky, and Chloe, Danny Phantom uh, was one of Butch Hartman's very well done shows. And then you can instantly see how far down hill it went after that. I mean, Danny Phantom ended, and then all of a sudden, it's like all the focus was on Fairly Odd Parents, and then we had Sparky, and then Chloe. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Chloe ended that show, okay? She, I, I, I'm gonna safely say this, she was the main reason why that show died. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. She was the main reason. But I'm looking forward to the next death battle with Danny Phantom taking on American Dragon Jake Long. My money's on Danny Phantom. And I know somebody out there is going to go, yeah, but Andrew, Jake Long's got the best powers ever. No, he turns into a dragon. And what, breathes fire? Yeah, okay. You have Danny Phantom. Basically, Danny Fenton, who becomes part ghost. He can turn intangible. He has a screaming whale. He can freeze stuff. He's got powers like you could never imagine. Not to mention ecto beams he can shoot out, he can fly. Yeah, no. He's got this one, hands down. What's Jake Long got? I turn into a dragon and what's it like, knows kung fu? So I actually have to watch their uh, bio on both the characters because I I'm curious how they're going to do this. Now, keep in mind, though, I have mixed feelings with Death Battle. I mean, I'm still pissed at the Goku versus Superman fights. I am still livid over the Ben 10 Green Lantern fight. That was still bullshit, and that was part of the argument I was getting into all week. Because I still do not think that Ben 10 would have lost that fight, because they didn't use Alien X to its full potential. They never used feedback, yet they mentioned feedback. And I was uh, getting into a really nice discussion <laughs> on my video about it. In the comments section, which I invited anybody else that wanted to join in, you know, feel free, chime in. Uh, because any figure I'm taking on all covers at that point. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't that bad. Oh, uh, so there was that. Uh, let's see. That was pretty much earlier in the week. Uh, nothing exciting happened Wednesday. Off the top of my head. Nothing exciting really happened Thursday, other than something that you don't really want to go into, because it's a personal matter. Um, let's see. Then we had, uh, Friday was dull. Well, Friday was dull until, uh, Friday night, because, uh, I love this. YouTube, uh, recommended something for me. Now, occasionally YouTube will do something nice for me from time to time. Not always, but sometimes. Uh, they still haven't gotten their heads out of their ass, though. But sometimes they can tell when I'm a little stressed out, and it's like, here, we think this might help relax you. And, well, YouTube, that th this really did help me. So, uh, YouTube recommended a, I guess like a Broadway uh, performance thing. It's basically, imagine Sesame Street on acid. And you can pretty much get this. It's called Avenue Q. Uh, I watched... Uh, a couple, well, I watched the one song for it, it was called The Internet is for Porn, uh, and the whole thing was basically about the one monster, or the one puppet on there, her last name is Monster, uh, she was, she's a kindergarten assistant, and she's gonna teach, she's gonna get to teach the class on her own, uh, she gets to decide the lesson, so she's gonna talk about the internet, and her one neighbor, uh, decides he's going to basically explain to her, this is how reality is, this is what the internet is really for, and she gets a little annoyed by it. 
Uh, but I was just laughing my ass off. I mean, it, it's really bad. It's like 9 at night. It's 9 o'clock at night. I am laughing so hard at this um, video that I almost felt like I was going to pee myself how bad I was laughing, how funny it was. And then that made me uh, track down some of the other songs from this thing. And I was just like, oh, my God, where has this been my entire life? Uh, so, yeah, it was a good good um song it, it was funny if you ever get a chance to check it out it is out uh just keep in mind this is uh kind of an adult thing but i did read on the wikipedia when i looked up what in the hell avenue q is to begin with then uh there is a child friendly version of this so <laughs> yeah yeah there is a child friendly version of this because you know brightly colored puppets aren't uh good money makers <laughs> we need to have a kid friendly version too God, I love that. Uh, but yeah, so that was that. Uh, but the biggest thing I think I had this week is somehow there's a package lost uh, that I sent out, which really sucks. Uh, and ironically, it was going uh, just literally to the state above me. It was going up to New York. I mean, you know I live in Pennsylvania. It was going up to New York. And uh, it's MIA right now. I I've sent a message to the post office about it. I don't know where the hell it is. I don't think the post office knows where it is. I'm not getting any answers from them. It was supposed to have arrived on Monday, and it'll be a week come Monday. And I told the person, well, if it doesn't get there by Wednesday, just let me know and I'll refund you. Because at that point, even I kind of feel like the post office is screwing me over. So that'll really suck that all of a sudden they'll get the item. Uh, I'll have refunded them, and they basically just got a free item because the post office decided to drag their feet on it. I mean, I know that there's a whole bunch of shit going on right now, and, you know, everything else is going on right now. I do keep up with current events, you know, as much as I can. But still, there was a credo with the post office, neither rain nor sleet nor snow uh, will keep us from our appointed rounds. Okay, uh, neither rain nor sleet nor snow. I'm pretty sure that viruses would count for that as so long as you're able to. The, the entire credo of the motto is basically that if you're able to, you will deliver the mail. I'm just curious where this thing got to now more than anything else. So I'm waiting to hear back from the post office, hopefully have an answer, and then hopefully see that this thing gets there. The sad part is I always like it when people message me. It's like, well, I haven't gotten my item yet. Uh, I guess I'll hopefully it'll come the next couple days. And in the back of my mind, I'm going... You're asking me now? It's like, what do you expect me to do about it? The only thing I have the ability to do is refund you your money or try to track your package and inquire to the post office where in the holy hell it is. And that's what I've been doing since, like, last night. I've been trying to find this thing. So that's fun. Uh, so, yeah. So hopefully it'll find its way there. I'll keep you. I'll keep everybody up to date on that. But uh, otherwise, that's been about my week. My mom and I cleaned the kitchen up a little bit today. Um, that's on. That's about all I got. So uh, yeah, let's get into the podcast, shall we? It's gonna be an easy one this week. I don't have that many topics to talk about. All right. So this has definitely got to be a sign of the times. They are changing. So Funimation is gonna be holding an online anime convention in July. Now, as a lot of you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has basically screeched to a halt social gatherings, parties, and events all over the place. Hell, Japan right now is going through a complete and total nightmare, uh, extending their lockdown uh, to almost like the end of May, if not maybe the beginning of June. Some states here in the U.S. are opening up, and all hell is just continuing to break loose. As I said in my opening, it's another round of Jumanji at this point. And this has just been a horrible year for conventions in general, with uh, San Diego Comic-Con uh, having to cl cancel them. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, can't even talk now. That got canceled. You had uh, South by Southwest got canceled. Um... So many other things got canceled. Some concerts were canceled. And I swear, I'm actually to the point now where I'm ready to just do a rant video on it. But I'm sick and tired of hearing people complain about all of the seniors lost out on prom. A lot of proms were canceled. Uh, graduations have been shifted around or having to do an online style graduation. Or here, we're just going to mail you your diploma. Uh, which, in all honesty, deal with it. Welcome to the 21st century, people. Uh, but 
the COVID-19 pandemic has put a damper on anime conventions for this year. And there's good news, though. This Funimation is deciding to try to replicate an experience that you could have at home. Which, honestly, I mean, that sounds like a really cool idea. This stands basically for the first thing that I'm ever thinking of is, hey, you can do, like, the car show that they would have down in Philadelphia. Uh, you can do, like, a virtual tour of that. And there's homes that allow you to do virtual tours. Why not have a convention online? I mean, sure, okay, vendors wouldn't be able to do much. But here's the thing. You don't really need to rent out a massive space for I me. Mean, okay, you would, but you do everything virtually. Uh, have the, like, uh... Have the people have the vendors uh set up their own like a page or something and then send that information off to who's hosting the event. Boom, there's their page and it shows all their wares that they currently have available and you can make purchases right from there. Like you click that thing, it instantly goes, oh, Okay, they want like one or two of this. How many did you say you had? And go that route. So that's actually an idea. And this could grow. Honestly, this could grow from this. Because this is going to be our new normal for a long ass time at this point. Uh, at this rate, it's pretty much going to be like this for at least another year. So, yeah, get ready for that. Uh, but Funimation Con 2020, the first convention for the anime distributor, will take place online July 3rd and 4th. It, ironically, they say through the 4th, but it's literally two days. Morons just put that ampersand right there. That's when Anime Expo was set to happen before it got canceled back in April. So Funimation describes the con as a two-day stream of cosplay meetups, industry panels, Q&A sessions, and more. <laughs> I, I'm sorry to laugh, but that's just funny. Uh, the official hashtag for the con is hashtag FunimationCon. The con may have been partially inspired by the fan-organized Anime Lockdown Con, which ran from May 1st to May 3rd, and featured guests from distributors like Discotech and voice actors. So, like I said, this is actually a pretty cool idea, and whether or not we'll actually get this... It's like the new normal. Because at this point, you don't need to worry about having this massive convention hall to rent out. You don't have to worry about parking or badges. Hey, here's the pass here's the passcode. It's a one you know, it's a only you can have this one. Everyone's unique, sort of like the chaotic codes for those cards. And you log in and you can walk around the whole time you're in there. I mean, you paid for the pass the whole time you walk around. Check out the events, check out all the stuff, and yeah, you can like go to one of the doors. And, I mean, they can even make it sort of like uh, that Second Life game, where it's like, here's a virtual rendition of you, and you can just walk around. You want to put yourself in cosplay, put yourself in cosplay. If you, I mean, this could actually open up the doorway for so many people that may not have been comfortable to go to a convention, and you know, like, oh, I don't want to go to a convention because there's going to be like a bunch of people are going to be dressed up and I'm going to feel like a weirdo. You can dress up your little avatar and it'll look really cool. You can walk around like your your favorite anime character. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of stuff. Th this could be unique ideas, but this is honestly a good starting point. I'm not lying. This can only just improve the more and more you do it. I mean, with the... Uh... <sighs> I really I found this out today. Uh, the one, uh, I think it was Universal, made the announcement that they aren't going to be doing any more movies anymore. They said that's it uh, because they're just going to be releasing the stuff straight online. I think that's what it was. Hold on. Let me let me pull it up. AMC. -E I think it was that made the comment about how uh, they were not going to be doing movies anymore, at least normally. Uh Yeah, blasted. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so that's pretty much it. Yeah, because it's uh, Universal Pictures. And Universal basically just came right out and said, no, we're not going to be putting your. Uh, we're not going to be putting our movies in your thing anymore. Because th they do better online. And the sad part is, I said that for so long because I mean look at the interview when that came out uh, that came out like Christmas Eve the one year because there was that whole uh, debacle and threat that 
something bad was going to happen if it was shown in theaters, so no theater wanted to air it. So they released it online. And that did extremely well. But the problem is that you go to the movies, you're pretty much paying to have a Barca lounger blow smoke up your ass and massage it at the same time. So, I mean, I don't like that. But, yeah, so that was an interesting thing here that they're doing that. I'll have a link to that. Uh, it's a Forbes article uh, basically explaining that. I'll have a link to that. I'm not going to discuss that. That's If you want to read about it, be my guest. But as far as conventions and that go... This is pretty much the same deal. I mean, you don't really want to go outside. You don't want to go out into your uh, home. You don't want to leave the safety of your fortress of solitude, basically. So, of course, you are... So, of course, you're not going to want to leave your house. So, having a quote-unquote uh, convention that you can go to in the comfort of your own home. In the ability to, you know, sit on your couch and go through, like, on a tablet, a smartphone, a desktop, or a laptop and just walk around is not going to kill the world. It's not going to be the end of Western civilization as you know it. All right, sure. It's not exactly the world's greatest idea. And you're going to have those people that will be like, but now I don't have a reason to, like, you know get my stuff going to have a brick and mortar place and a lot of the vendors will complain but honestly you can still do your shopping online I mean they're charging sales tax now for online purchases for everything I have to do it every time I buy something on freaking eBay I have to pay sales tax and it's based on the state that I'm buying it from so it could be extremely high it could be extremely low you know I, I have to pay it and Online is pretty much going to be the way you're going to go. I mean, people can buy their groceries online. They can buy this and that online. There just has to be better ways to pay. But this, like I said, this honestly could be a good starting point, uh, having online conventions. I mean, forego the fact that, oh, people don't want to go. And this could also really help out the fact that, as a lot of people who probably know this, maybe, maybe not, there are some that might realize this, it is expensive to fly to where the convention is. Like, if you're going to Comic-Con, that is expensive as hell to fly there. I mean, you're, even the cheapest flight is expensive. The hotels get booked like crazy, so unless you got a friend that a lot you uh, sleep on, crash on their couch, you're screwed. And that's the whole kicker about this, is that, oh, look, you don't have to worry about, you know, crashing on your buddy's couch. You don't have to worry about pissing away money on an airline ticket as well as you know the pass to get in and how much you had to pay for that well you could do the online convention it's like hey i don't have to do much of anything and they could easily set up a virtual i mean okay the first one's probably going to be like some place they're going to rent out have like two or three people in there setting everything up for them and then that'll be it but in all honesty they could just do like a virtual thing for like the next one it's like have them, like I said, have them send, have the vendors in that send in what they would have their stand displayed as. Like, tell them, here, we'll tell you the exact thing to get. You take a picture of how it's set up, and we'll create the interactive thing ourselves for that. Charge them, like, what they would to have them be there in the first place, and boom! Then you have... Oh, look, I'm getting out. You'll be getting out to more people because then you could get more overseas uh, buyers that might be interested in your stuff. I mean, you could get somebody from the UK that might want to, that might have wanted to come see the convention but was no way in hell going to pay an international flight. Check it out online. It's like, oh, my God, this is so cool. I can buy this from this person. This is really cool. And then they might be able to strike a deal and then, boom, just do like a simple little store setup. I mean, this... It has this flood of opportunity and possibilities. I'm actually excited about this. But granted, though, Funimation's mostly doing this because money, backers, shit like that. Okay, th there is some greed behind it. But in all honesty, the possibility that this gives out in the long run outweighs the greedy nature of which it was created for. It, it honestly does. Because this could not only just affect... You know, like, 
Funimation, like, anime conventions, but you have comic conventions, um, museums can do this, national parks and stuff like that. You know, it's like, oh, look, I can't leave my house, but hey, I can still take a virtual tour. All they gotta do is literally just, like, record, I mean, for museums and that, just record the tour, and then put up, it's like, here, take the tour. Okay, it's $5 per, it's $5 for the code, you pay the five dollars or five ten fifteen bucks you pay the money for the code boom you get the code beep, and it goes through because each time could be different you could show like different wings uh it's like okay you know, like this tour is going to be here it gives you access you can just walk the whole museum or something and for parks you can do other stuff but you also have so many other things that this could bring about for this I mean, besides the fact that the whole pandemic is brought about and i really hate to say it the selfish nature of the human race it really has there is some light of hope in this and some goodness and this could technically show us the evolutionary branch upon which we really should try to shoot for i mean i, I mean i for one would rather enjoy something that i can sit at home on a chair that's comfortable and i'm not freezing my ass off outside to watch a football game or something. Look, I can sit at home and watch this. I could do that already, but you get my gist. You don't have to worry about the players getting hurt. They could just do VR. You still have the players. You still have the real-time reaction. They, You have VR setups now, so they could literally just be playing a VR thing, just add like a rumble feature that they'll feel it when they get hit. Boom! You have so many more people that could then be athletes. And they'll still get paid because you'd still have sponsors and everything else. This is like an entire discussion video uh, I could technically do. I'll probably record it after I'm done here. But yeah, this is an entire thing. And I, I for one, I'm fine with this. If Funimation wants to do a startup trend with online conventions, I say do it. This year it was a massive screw you middle finger for conventions. That much is a given. But this could definitely give you ideas for the next time around. Okay, sure, you're going to have the whole, but I used to interact with people at this one, and we would hang out and, like, play games and stuff like that. If you're going to be talking, like, retro conventions, like the one that they would have in Texas or something, you can easily get emulators, pop it up on the screen, which one do you want to play, boom, and then have it emulated. Sure, you can't physically play it on an old school machine, but... You know, it is what it is. You got to take the good with the bad on this one. But, uh, yeah, th this I am wholeheartedly in favor for. I I'm all for this. This could be the start of a decent idea. I mean, no longer will you need to have a massive convention hall uh, to rent out for this stuff. You don't have to worry about parking, massive crowds of people. Well, look, everybody can sit at home. And they could always, you know, team up with their friends. Like I said, have, have it be like a second life. Uh, sort of gameplay or even World of Warcraft style graphics where you can walk around free world Like do free roam and you can walk all over the place. You can still interact with your friends You can still interact with this and that I swear if somebody would make something like that in the form of an online social media site That's it. The world's done at that point. You have full and total control You put that up for free with ads that pay the bills you allow people to customize their avatar. They can log in, interact with their friends. They can interact with people overseas. And everybody just all in the 3D world. Sort of think like Facebook and Twitter, but more 3D. Boom. That's it. You have officially outdone both of, their, both of them, and that's the end of that chapter. That'll be it. There's an idea. Seriously. Jump on that. But yeah, I'm all for this idea 100%. I, I like this. I think it's a great idea. And, uh... Yeah, I, I'm all for it. All right, so speaking of Funimation, let's just kill both uh, both birds here with one stone if we can. Funimation's expanding their anime catalog with some NIS America titles. And oh boy, NIS, I have some fond memories of them. Oh boy. Uh, for those of you that are unfamiliar with that, what that stands for, uh, give me a second here. I know it has... I know it has a actual acronym for it. I'm almost certain that it does. I just cannot remember what it is off the top of my head. Okay, their website is actually not going to help me on this one. I need to go Wikipedia here. Oh my god. This is going to be great. 
Uh, yeah, pretty sure here. Uh, okay, no, that's not it either. All right, I'm a little sure I kind of remember what what the thing is. NIS America. So I have to look it up. But yeah, uh, Funimation's getting some of their uh, getting some of their stuff. So this is an interesting thing. Yeah. Oh, here, here we go. Here we go. I knew Wikipedia wouldn't let me down. I knew Wikipedia wouldn't let me down. Yeah, so they do have other media. Uh, this is in North America. Okay. Yeah, so it's uh, basically... I'm going to need it up anyway. <laughs> I'd need it up anyway. Uh, so it's basically Nippon Ichi Software. Uh, and they're talking about their American branch on this one. So they branched into other media. They're actually a video game company. Uh, ooh, published by God. Oh, what, what did they publish? Okay. Uh, just kind of saw something here that says published by Gung Ho. I'm trying to figure out what Gung Ho published here through them. But, oh, well, I'm not going to. Yeah. But you basically have, it's a game company that broke into, like, other um, media. It's a, uh. It's a Japanese video game developer and publisher. Uh, they've broken like a lot of other titles and stuff like that. They did um, other media as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, I personally kind of like it. I'm going to click this. I'm, I'm, I am curious which one it was. Was it Danganronpa or something? Huh. Okay. I can't tell which one it was that they kind of did here, but, uh, yeah, okay, apparently, uh, Gung Ho helped make one. Damn if I know which, though. I'll tell you, it's I. I know, it's L. Okay. I, that's K. Is that an L? No. That's weird. I, I can't find it. Yeah, okay. But either way, it's still interesting. That's K there. And K comes after L. Or L comes after K. Yeah, okay, well, whatever. But either way, uh, I was in something interesting. But yeah, so... <laughs> got a little off track there. So Funimation uh, announced a new partnership with NIS America to bring a bunch of the latter's anime to Funimation streaming service. Uh, starting with the likes of Card Captor Sakura and Toradora or Toradora on May 5th, uh, the collaboration aims to introduce nearly 20 more shows to the Funimation catalog. So basically, uh, Funimation's opened up their doors and said, "Hey, we want to have some of your anime titles that you don't care about anymore. Let us have them. Come here, come here. It's all right. We'll give you love and attention. Don't worry. We'll make sure that people find you and they love you just like we do. By the way, once you're under the Funimation name, you will never be allowed to go to anyone else again. But hey, come on in. Don't worry about it. We care a lot about you. We're Funimation. That's right. We're good people. Yes, yes, that's right. Then they just look over at NIS America and go, we got them. We took them from you. They're ours now, damn it. Uh, so here's what you're going to see popping up, uh, what should be up already. Came up May 5th. Uh, Toradora, Car Captor Sakura, Love Live, or Love Live School Idol Project Season 2, Love Live the School Idol Project Movie, and Nagi Asu, A Lull in the Sea. Uh, coming soon, according to the article here, you have uh, Arakawa, Arakawa, under the Bridge, Seasons 1 and 2. Bunny Drop, Chronicles of the Going Home Club. <laughs> okay. Uh, Daily Lives of High School Boys. The Eccentric Family, Season 1. Uh, Genshinken, Second Generation. Ghastly Prince, Enma Burning Up. Ground Control to Psycho Electric Girl. Okay. Uh... Hanasaku Iro Iroha, 
uh, Blossoms for Tomorrow and the movie Sweet Home, or Home Sweet Home. Uh, if Her Flag Breaks, Kimi ni Todoki, uh, From Me to You, Seasons 1 and 2, Pandora Hearts, and Yuri Yuri, Seasons 1 and 2. Uh, so let's go. So let's see what other titles that they have done here. Uh, so you have uh, the following, but not limited to, according to the Wikipedia article here. Uh, Card Captain Sakura, Persona, Trinity Soul, Our Home's Fox Deity, Natsumi's Book of Friends, Toradora, Pandora Hearts, uh, Uminiko, When They Cry, Kimi no Todoke, From Me to You, Katena Gatari, Wanagari, House of Fire Leaves, Arakawa Under the Bridge, Occult Academy, Zakuro, I'm, I am apologize if I am mispronouncing any of these, by the way, uh, Ground Control, The Psychoelectric Girl, Yuri Yuri, Bunny Drop, uh, Ana, Anohana, the flower we saw that day. Ghastly Prince Enma burning up. Hanasaku Ara. Uh, the Everyday Tales of a Cat God. The Princess and the Pilot. Brave Ten. Daily Lives of High School Boys. Naruko Crawling with Love. My Little Monster. Fuse. Memories of a, Memoirs of a Huntress. Love Live. The Troubled Life of Miss... Kotora, Chronicles of the Going Home Club, Genshin Seki, uh, Genshinken, Genshiken, Second Generation, The Eccentric Family, A Lull in the Sea, The Pilot's Love Song, If Her Flag Breaks, and Love Live, The School Idol Movie. That's it. And a good chunk of those are already going to be going over to Funimation. So what's stopping them from getting the rest of them? I mean, you know, at this point, I pretty much, I mean, does this seem that NIS is basically going bankrupt and they just don't want to uh, admit anything, or what? I mean, that, that kind of opens up a couple questions here as to what in the hell is going on here. Because you don't just suddenly uh, strike a deal with Funimation if you're uh, basically liquid. I mean, yeah, if you're liquid, you are not striking a deal with Funimation. Nobody's that stupid. Well, let me rephrase that. I mean, if you're not, yeah, if you're not liquid, yeah, you ain't striking a deal. Uh, but does this mean like they're shutting down the gaming portion of their company? Or what the hell is going on here? That That's the $150,000 question, I think, uh, to be asked here. Uh, but yeah, so there's like no other information here. Uh... Yeah, nothing at all. But, uh, seriously, though, this is kind of interesting. Uh, but they do have a bunch of games that they came out with. Uh, I think they're still making some yet. Let me check. There's a lot of games. Like, a shit ton of games. Like, and those are just the ones that are released overseas. Oh my god, there's a lot of them here. I have games published by NIS America. Uh, let's see here. Spectre Souls. Aedis Escape. Uh, Poochie Poochie Virus. Cross Edge. Soccer Wars. So Long My Love. Uh, what Did I Do to Deserve This? Uh, Cave Story 3D. Hyperdimension Neptunia MK2. Ooh, that, oh, I actually heard good things about that. Uh, let's see, Way of the Sam... Ooh, Way of the Samurai! No way! I actually played, uh... I think it was the second one. Ooh, let me check that. I actually think I played the second one of that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. No, let me scroll up here. Does it have that, like, up here further? No. Damn, I think I actually played Way of the Samurai, uh, number two. Back for the PlayStation 2. By acquiring published by Spike. I think I played number two. Because uh, it was like, it was a really interesting game because I had to, there's like six different endings, and I only ever got like three of them. Like three or four of them. It kind of pissed me off. 
But, uh, ooh, okay, so Way of the Samurai, I remember playing that. I, just, I swear that there was, like, a PlayStation 2 version, and I cannot, uh, for the life of me, think of it. Uh, which will suck, because, I mean, I know I can... I know I can look it up. I know it exists. I've seen it. I remember playing it. Because it was for the PlayStation 2, and... I just... I remember playing it because I hated it. I thought it was stupid at first, and then I started playing it a little more, and I was like, oh, yeah, this is really cool. Because there was a part in the game where you could literally, like, uh, go into this samurai's home and just, or this blacksmith's home, take, uh, have him fix up your sword and prove it, and if you didn't have the gold to pay him, because you never did, uh, you could just run, and all of a sudden he'll come chasing after you, and then you could take him down and get his sword, which is really powerful. Uh, is there more? Oh, yeah, there's more. Oh, my God, there's more. Uh, yeah, hold on. Oh, I, I gotta check this out. I'm, it's kind of bugging me here. Oh, wait, there was more. Okay, hold on. I gotta go backwards here. Uh, games list L to Z. Okay. And scroll all the way down because this was BW and W comes near the end of the alphabet. Okay, here we go. W. W A. Winx Club, no. Winter, no. Winning, no. Alright, here we go. Wave the Samurai, Wave the Samurai 2. Okay, so there's only two of them that came out. Um. I gotta remember which one I played now. Was it Way of the Samurai 2 or Way of the Samurai? Ah, I think it was just Way of the Samurai. I think I played the first one. I think... Yeah, I think I only played the first one. I think it was the first one. Uh, so, so, Samurai is top of society. This is yep! That's the first one. Because there's, like, different uh, characters you can pick, different uh, endings you could do, sword enhancements. Oh, yeah, that was the first one. I, don't, I think I never got the second one. I could have found it, but I just never bothered to get it. But, yeah, definitely the first one. I played the first one. So, yeah, I did. I remember Way of the Samurai. That was a fun game. But, uh, yeah, so this is an interesting... Um, you know, sort of deal here. But, like I said, you don't just strike a deal with... Uh, Funimation if you're liquid. So something's got to be going on on their end. Either they're going to be shutting down their uh, anime production or they just just want the licenses gone. Like they don't have the ability to hold on to the licenses anymore. Because at this point, I mean, Funimation, it's down to one of the, like the big three here. Uh, a lot of the smaller ones got bought up by a tremendous amount of the other companies. I mean... Well, who the, I was gonna say, who the hell does the Gundam stuff now? This is a good question. I mean, who the hell owns the rights to the Gundam franchise anymore? Um, because I know it was, uh, yeah, I know it was originally owned by Sunrise. Who owns the rights to that now? Okay, owned by Bandai. I think it's just owned by Sunrise now. I remember that Bandai owned it, then Bandai went, uh, yeah, then Bandai, then Bandai, yeah, then Bandai went belly up, and they just, like, dumped all their stuff, uh, yeah, I think it's just Sunrise now, yeah, Sunrise is good, they, yeah, they, they do the Gundam franchise, see, the thing is that with a lot of the anime titles, the smaller companies just can't hold the licenses anymore, because, Either they can't compete with the bigger stuff, or the stuff's old enough that they would rather it either go to some place that will make them some money, but they don't want to pay the fee. Like, oh, here, we'll put it up on a streaming site, but then they have to pay, you know, to give the rights to them, and then they have to split the money on it and stuff like that. It's all a big, you know, thing. Or we'll just sell it to another company, and then it's their headache to do with it. And we just take the money and run. And that's what a lot of them will probably do. And in this case, that's what they're going to do. I mean, Card Captors was good. I, mean, I still like Card Captors. It's one of my favorite uh, 
I'm actually going to say this. It's one of my favorite Magical Girl series next to Sailor Moon. Yes, I have seen some, but, I mean, this is actually not that big of a humongous thing. This happens a lot. I mean, look back at Media Blasters years ago. Uh, they had the rights to Bakuman, and they gave those rights to Viz. Viz decided we're just going to go forward on the anime, and that was it. By then, the manga was already done. I think Viz was already doing the manga to begin with. Uh, but Media Blasters had the anime rights, and they screwed it up. And Viz is just like, look, we'll take the anime rights off your hands. And they did. I wish somebody would do that for the Icon series. But then again, that's coming out now on Blu-ray, so... There is that. But yes, yeah, so this is actually not a bad thing. It's more of an interesting little NIS was still alive with anime, but at this point you have what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. It's like 20 of them. Almost 20. Uh, like I counted 19, it might be 20. So yeah, it's actually not too bad, but out of their entire list, that's almost a good half their list. So. It's either the other half's being held up in limbo, or they want to see how well this does, and then just either tell Funimation, okay, you got a taste for it, now give us more money and we'll give you the rest of it, or, well, we don't like how you did this, you screwed us pretty good, you're not getting the rest of them. It's just a matter of how it plays out. But with some of the stuff on here, it's actually pretty good ones, and this might have just been like an old school style of... Uh, buying rights where it's like look here's the thing it's i like how they're going it's a collaboration it's i don't think it's so much of a collaboration as a they're getting the rights for this because they're putting it up on their streaming service on their thing it's like oh it's a partnership yeah it's a partnership till they can get the legal eagles and the legal beagles and the legal weasels <laughs> legal weasels basically yeah the legal weasels uh, to pretty much go through and say, okay, so this, 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 and this now belong to them, and this, 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 and this belong to you. And try to come together, try to just make it seem like, look, you guys brought this to us, we enjoy this. I mean, like I said, I could just be reading too far into it, but it's a possibility. So, I, I don't mind it, it's interesting, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. Just more anime for Funimation, that's all. Other ones will catch up. All right, so here's an interesting uh, topic. Are you tired of having those online meetings that are boring as hell, you know, with your plain old background or your kitchen wall as a background? Tired of that just dullness that you have? Well, believe it or not, uh, there are some online meeting backgrounds that you can enhance with Ultraman and Gridman. Yes, that's right. Gridman and Ultraman can be used now as backgrounds. So, uh, it's basically tired of showing your friends and colleagues blank walls or messy rooms during a video call. Well, now you can check out these free backgrounds courtesy of Suburu... Suburu... Yeah. Suburaya Productions. The creators of Ultraman and its various spin-offs. Uh, released as part of the company's Stay at Home with Ultraman campaign, the backgrounds are pulled from the recent CG Ultraman series and... One of my favorite anime series, S S S S dot Gridman. <laughs> Love that series. Uh, so you can set these as your background on Zoom or Skype and enjoy powered up calls. Uh, some of them are only work for three minutes though. So yeah, that kind of sucks. Uh, but probably copyright, I would assume, might be the main thing. But uh, that's pretty cool though. You get to have like some backgrounds like Gridman and that. Uh, but for those of you that aren't familiar with either of these shows, so uh, Ultraman, the 2019 one, uh, co-directed by Kenji Kamiyama and Shinji Aramaki, uh, debuted on Netflix uh, April 1st of last year. Second season's in the works, but here's how Netflix described that. Uh, decades ago, a hero from the stars left the world in peace. Now the son of Ultraman must rise to protect the Earth from a new alien threat. Or, of course, my favorite anime series, at least one of my favorites, Gridman, S -S 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 dot Gridman. I had to make sure I got all four of the S's there. Um, aired in 2018. Uh, but basically, if you ever want a recap of that 
Anime GBU, Season 1, Episode 1. I did Gridman. Uh, but basically, Yuta Hibiki uh, can't remember who he is, and now he's seen and hearing things that others don't. A voice from an old computer tells him to remember his calling, and he sees a massive, unmoving creature in the distance. Nothing makes sense until the behemoth springs to life. Suddenly, Yuta is pulled into the digital world, reappearing as the one, reappearing in the real one as the colossal hero, Gridman. God, I love that show. It was one of my favorite uh, anime series. But on top of that, though, I mean, first off, I mean, this is pretty cool, though, having backgrounds. Uh, sucks that they may only work for, like, three minutes. Some of them only work for, like, three minutes. Uh, so I can understand that. You figure copyright, copyright, copyright. Did I mention copyright? I would assume instantly that's 90% of the reason why. But on top of that, though, this also brings up an interesting... Uh, caveat i guess i could say to this a little side thing uh remember the new uh gridman series that's coming out that sssss dot dana zeon yep the anime unveiled uh new visuals cast details and some other stuff as well so i'm looking forward to this uh it's not going to be a direct spin-off or a direct sequel it's just a follow-up uh, so this is actually pretty cool. It was announced last November, but we've got a fresh look at the series via an admittedly low-resolution uh, visual that's in the article. Uh, while they've been previously been given a look at the series, main robot, it's the first time you're going to see the main characters. And honestly, that's about the only downside I have of this. The main characters kind of look like crap. But then again, looks can be deceiving. Uh, it's not yet clear, though, who's going... Or who's who, but we have learned the main cast will be... Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Uh, Daiki Hamano from uh, Isekai Quartet's Mathis. Or Joan Weiss. Uh, you have uh, Junyin Enoki, and I do apologize for mispronouncing anybody, by the way. Uh, from Digimon Adventure Tries, uh, Takiru... Taka, Takashi, so it's going to be Tai. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, Shinon, or Shion, Wakayama from Gundam Bill Divers Re-Rise. All right! Re-Rise! Yes! Woo! That's actually getting pretty good now, too. I've been watching it. Woo! Re-Rise! Re uh, that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, there's uh, Hinata Muka. I'd have to remember which one that is from that. It might be the one that's the friend. I think that's the friend. I think that's uh, the main character's friend in the real world. Uh, so that'll work out pretty well. Uh, we got one from Darlene and the Franks. Uh, it's uh, Yuchiro Umehara. And then we have uh, Chika Anzai from Sound Euphoriums. Uh, it's Rina Kosaki and Goro's the other one from uh, Darlene and the Franks. This is actually pretty cool. The uh, show's going to be staffed by the folks behind the original SS, SSSS Gridman. Doc Gridman. Uh, that includes the director, Akira uh, Ami Maya, or Mia. Uh, screenwriter, Kinchi Hasegawa. Composer, Shiro Sagashi. And character, design, and character designer, Masaru Sakamoto. That one I can at least get. I, again, I do apologize if I mispronounce names on here. Remember, I don't speak English all that well when it comes to trying to sound out Japanese names. I, mean, I can read how it's written, but it's basically how is it being sounded is what throws me for the loop. Uh, but basically, we don't know yet where we can see or when we'll be able to see uh, Dana Zeon. Uh, as soon as they find out They'll let everybody know. But Gridman, though, was so great. I'm not going to lie. So, yeah. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, this is honestly really interesting. So, you can enhance your online meetings with some Gridman and Ultraman stuff. And on top of that, we got some more information for World Triggers. Uh, or for tri not World Triggers. Well, yeah, World Triggers is eventually still coming back yet, as far as I know. But uh, for Triggers... Uh, Dana Zeon, uh, series, which is really, uh, cool for me, so, 
Yeah, by the way, links are in the description if you want to read the articles for yourselves. I'm putting them underneath each one so that you'll be able to find it. So there is that, at least for the anime-related uh, ones. At least for the anime-related ones, I'm putting them directly underneath the uh, one that I'm talking about. I mean, I didn't have anything extra for the anime convention, so that one didn't get anything. But underneath the other ones, you'll see it. Uh, but yeah, this definitely is impressive. I'm not going to lie. I liked it a lot. I thought Gridman was a good series. So that's actually pretty cool, though. I mean, I admit, having something that's like a decent background would be pretty cool. But what's to stop somebody from just putting up an image... That they would have up on like Facebook or something and just have that as their background or creating their own besides copyright. That, that's honestly the only thing I could see stopping would be copyright because you know that people wouldn't be able to do this for like YouTube or anything because the YouTube copyright bot would be on everybody's ass in like 30 seconds. It would automatically go into target mode and just go after everybody. But something like this I could understand for like Zoom and meetings and stuff like that where you know, the bot can't technically touch them. And people often have, like, their swag in the background. Like, you call somebody and do a video time with them, and they're in the room, and they're in their room. You, they are gonna, you're going to see their swag. You're going to see their shit in their room. It's a no-brainer. But, yeah, it is what it is. But that's still pretty cool. I thought it was interesting. And, yeah, that is amazing. They could come out with a copyright-free thing like that for YouTubers. I would be on that. Big time. <laughs> so what do May 4th and Star Wars have in common? Well, if you're like many of the people out there, you probably have heard the joke, May the 4th be with you. Yeah, May 4th is considered Star Wars Day. And what better way to celebrate Star Wars Day? A bunch of uh, fans recreated scenes uh, from the... New Hope movie, the first in the set of Star Wars movies ever made, by the way. And they recreated some of the scenes uh, by utilizing their action figures. And I'm talking, these are the figures that you would not ever uh, take out of a collector's thing. I mean, these are the type of figures that the fans put in like plexiglass containers and seal them up so that no air gets inside. I mean, they're pressurized so that nothing affects them. Like the minute you open it up, boom, it cracks and destroys them because if somebody's going to steal them, they want to make sure that they're either going to be worthless to the person that's stealing them or that they'll get them back in one piece. But yeah, th these are the like the whole-on uh, creations here. So, uh, it's actually kind of funny. So a group of Star Wars fans have taken their action figures off the shelves and done something practical with them for a change. <laughs> As the article says, uh, dressing them up in amazing dioramas and recreating set for set the plot of Star Wars Episode 4. Episode 4 was A New Hope. Uh, the project initially planned to be a shot-by-shot -shot remake, but after finding that would be an insane amount of work, uh, they scaled it back to this, which is far more manageable, than, uh, but just as impressive. Yeah, you have no idea what goes into stop-motion animation, and for them to do a shot-by-shot -shot remake of the whole movie, just keep in mind, how long is the original movie, anyway? I mean, I honest to God, I'm just curious here. What the hell? What, what is, uh... Star Wars... EP on this episode 4. I'm just curious what the runtime of this bitch is. Uh, because... Uh, you figure... Uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna hate asking this question what the runtime is I'm probably gonna regret it um let's see god damn it no I actually get I actually have to look up the Wikipedia Are you sure I gotta go into the Wikipedia article just to get the length of time Google can't help me you bastards I'll go to IMDB IMDB should be able to tell me all I want to know is how long the movie is I can Google never tell me this stuff um, two hours and one minute long. Yeah, okay. There's no way in hell you're doing a shot-for-shot -shot remake. That's two hours and one minute long. Um, I have, I have listened to people talk about doing stop-motion animation. Um, there was a person that did a whole bunch of it as, like, a college project for their final in-animation. 
and they said just to make a 20 minute movie. A 20 minute movie took them seven and a half months to make a 20 minute movie doing stop motion animation. Uh, yeah, there's no way in hell they would be doing a two hour, one minute movie shot by shot remake. Now, let's just do the diorama things, it's just as good. Uh, spanning over 250 frames, it covers every single scene from the original film. And while mostly using physical objects does dabble uh, some of the effects done, uh, some of the effects work from time to time when the shots call for it, yeah, it's not that bad. Uh, the shot, uh, the shoot was put together by shooting the galaxy, Imperial Sock, Kingdom of Weird. Work more or less, model kit Star Wars, plastic Star Wars, but Futu, Toshi, uh, Toshi 7007, and Chevy Tahu. So there's like an entire sequence. Uh, there's a link to see the sequence. I don't really want to see the sequence. Uh, oh, you know what? What the hell? I'll, I'll pull it up. I'll mute. Let me mute because I really don't want any copyright strikes. I can't afford any. I don't really want any either. I fly under YouTube's radar for a reason. I'll badmouth YouTube, but I'm flying under their radar, damn it. It's like I'm back in high school again. Oh, okay. It just takes you to freaking, uh, uh, Imgur, I M G U R dot com, uh, gallery. So, okay. Never mind then. Yeah, it's like my friends and I recreated almost the entire original Star Wars film with toys. Uh, it's a bit of a thing in here, so I'll add this link in then too, I guess. Damn it. I, I, no offense to me, I'm just... I try to figure out the links and everything, and then I have to add more in to make sure that everybody can get uh, what they're looking for and understand and can read it for themselves. Star Wars. Oh. Alright, that way I don't forget. Alright, it's in the link. You've heard me typing, so you know it's there. Uh, so here, we can actually read a little bit of a bio on this. Uh, a long time ago, I started a project with some friends online to recreate the entire original Star Wars film almost frame by frame, sometimes with some artistic liberties with toy photography. We completed probably about 90% of the film, but because we would often have to wait for certain toys to be released or located online or dioramas to be built or bought, as well as new Photoshop skills learned before we could continue, work slowed and eventually stopped. We never stopped taking photos, we just all slowly moved on from the project. Uh, looking back on it, I think what we did finish is pretty cool, and I wanted to share it with you all rather than just have it sit here on my hard drive. And May the 4th is probably the perfect time. At the end, I've credited everyone who contributed and hope you take the time to check out their awesome work. Especially because I like to think we've all drastically improved our photography since starting this project, lol. Uh, thank you and may the force be with you. P.S. I hope IMGUR doesn't screw up the image order, which I've had happen with such a large post before, lol. So, uh, it's pretty cool. So you got like, uh, okay, it actually starts off with episode 4, and then there's more episode 4, and I'm just not getting, uh, oh wow, okay, they actually have the, okay, now, alright, now see, it's going down here. Uh, wow, this is impressive. Is it literally, the, I think it's literally the toys, oh my god. Uh, it's 200 and some, 248 more images. Yeah, okay, I'm not loading up any more of those. But you have, like, the Star Destroyer and everything else that's going on. Uh, so this is actually pretty cool. Uh, you can pull up the whole thing. It's done on the 4th. Yeah, I can understand this. And you figure, similar things, you're never going to make a full-on 100% shot-for-shot remake. I mean, you're going to have issues, especially with toys like this. Uh, difficulty in finding them, like they were saying. Uh, building your sets, though, in dioramas wouldn't be that difficult but I could see it being a problem but mostly what I get to kick out of is the fact that they realize okay this is gonna be an extremely hard uh, thing to do every single uh, Star Wars uh, movie or Star Wars uh, scene here 
And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, that, that does, uh, yeah, that does kind of make sense there in a way. That uh, you're going to get screwed over pretty good there. But all in all, it's not that bad. And this is definitely creativity. And I applaud creativity. Thinking outside the box, I applaud that. Uh, so yeah, kudos. Uh, if you get a chance, check it out. If you're a fan of Episode 4, I'm actually not uh, that huge of a fan of Episode 4, sadly. I never liked it. I'm more of a fan of Episodes 2 and Episodes 3. Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, and Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Those are the ones that I am kind of a fan of. More so than the original trilogy. Just saying, that's where I stand. I mean, I, I figure if you're going to have something be a prequel, then that means that you originally wanted to start with that, and you were screwed to begin starting with that. Because nobody starts a movie series with episode four that just opens up the questions of where's the first three uh which we end up getting years later and it's like oh cool episode one sucked but episodes two and three were my favorites and then disney took over the reins and episodes seven eight nine blue sorry disney i mean i i didn't like the star wars uh franchise after they got their hands on it I think Disney did not do a wonderful thing to it. They just wanted to make more money off of it. I mean, you had the, oh, here, let's do this, this, and this. And, oh, yeah, you know, while we're at it, let's do this, too, while we're at it, just for shits and giggles. And, uh, yeah, it didn't exactly help them. Any, at least I don't, I don't think it did. But, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. Hey, what's a podcast of mine without something Pokemon-related in some way, shape, or form? While it's not directly Pokemon-related for once, Pokemon animator Masaki, or Masaaki uh, Iwane is set to launch a YouTube channel about animation. I have no issues with this. Look, I I've been practicing my drawing skills, and it's nice to learn a new skill. I figured, what the hell, I might as well improve my drawing skills. And, you know, work that direction. Because, I mean, as much as I love to get into my Legos, and I'm tempted, so tempted, to just start digging into that section to get down there to them, just to pull them out and make sure they're okay and move them around and stuff. Believe me, I'm tempted to. It's really just a matter of why I haven't done it yet. And I can't think of a good reason. Other than the fact that I'd have to move a few things that, honestly, I could move and really wouldn't make that much of a difference. Yeah, nothing's really stopping me. I should really just do that this weekend at some point yet. Yeah, maybe I'll do that Monday night. Or Tuesday night. Maybe I'll do that. But anyway, I have my ideas. But uh, animator Masaaki uh, Iwane has a long history with anime. Especially when it comes to Pokemon. Which he's been working on since the very beginning. Uh... <laughs> you know, yeah, sorry about that. I had to yawn. Huh. Sorry about that. I felt the yawn coming on. It's getting a little late. Uh, he's had some standout credits uh, on the likes of Dragon Ball Z, so it's safe to say he's an authority when it comes to animation. And with that in mind, our interest was definitely peaked. At least, well, the article writers at Otaku USA Magazine and mine as well. Uh, Pete, when he announced plans to launch a YouTube channel all about animation. This goes back to my original, you can easily learn a new skill on e on YouTube. It is not that difficult. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of DIY things you can learn. Hell, I actually watched an entire video on a, a single tool you can buy from a hardware store to change a tire like the actually like, to actually take the tire off of the rim and put a new tire on the rim i watched like three videos on that on how that's done and how it works boom just like that so uh this is the interesting thing now as of right now it's gotta be up if not it'll be up by the time my podcast goes up because uh, I don't understand the whole... I, I try my best to. Don't get me wrong. I try my best to. But I can easily get it screwed up because I don't understand the time difference. So basically, uh, the channel is set to launch 
May 10th at 8 p.m. Japan uh, Japanese time, so Japan time. And there's currently a trailer for it on YouTube, which I, by the way, did subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, the video below is in Japanese, as you can see in the article here, uh, without subtitles. Hopefully, if the demand is there, uh, Iwane will eventually make his channel's videos more accessible to fans who speak other languages. My guess is it's going to be region crotch blocked again. Which starts to annoy me, I think, more and more. Uh, you had the whole Sailor Moon thing where it's like, Oh look, here's the first three arcs of Sailor Moon for free on YouTube. Only in Japan. W what the hell? Well, you know, people in America like Sailor Moon too. Thanks for screwing us to the wall. Or you have, uh, here's Gundam Reconquista in G. Yeah, up to episode 12 in Engl in uh, America. Alright, episode 12. Region locked. No! I want to know what happens next. I was getting involved in this, damn it. It was on an actual channel on YouTube. It's like, nope, it's region locked. Damn it! But yeah, this actually sounds interesting. Because uh, you're going to have a lot of those channels that... They'll honestly just like sit here and they'll teach you how to do something and they'll show you how it's done or explain to you how it's done and that'll help give you a better idea as to what goes into making something that you enjoy i mean i have watched a lot of videos on how anime is made and how an anime series is even made and i've gotten a very good insight from that just by watching that now do i have the whole picture hell no I never will. I mean, I've read Bakuman to get an idea of what happens with the manga world and the manga keys and the manga kais, so that's the thing. But, yeah, this is definitely an interesting concept. I'm looking forward to this channel when it does uh, launch. I will. It's going to be up by the time this goes up, so you should be able to find it. Uh, just in the, vid in the article here, just scrolling down to the YouTube video, because I'm pretty sure that that is the... Uh, YouTube channel. In fact, I could just probably even just click that right now. It should take me to the channel. I can see if it's live or not. Uh, I don't think it is yet. Uh, six days ago was the last video that got put up, so... I don't know. It's like a minute something long, and I think that's the video that's on here right now. I can play it. There's no... Yeah. Yeah, it's the last video that's up, so it's not technically up as of right now. At least as of me recording, it is not yet up, because the last video that's up uh, is six days ago. So, yeah, definitely not uh, up yet, not live yet. Though that video has 1,800 views, uh, which is pretty cool. So, and it's the highest viewed video uh, on the channel, so that's something. I mean, what's the highest viewed video I have on my channel? Okay, let me actually fin actually put the whole thing on here, stupid. Um, yeah, I love that. 192 subscribers. Wow. I didn't think I had that many yet. Huh, cool. 192 subscribers. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And I have my uh, channel trailer that pops up. I'm just kind of curious what the highest... Uh, here we go. Okay, so my highest viewed video is still uh, Rise of the TMNT, what the hell. Uh, 3,900 views. Damn. Uh, close seconds being uh, WTF Nickelodeon at 1,200 views. And Thundercats Roar. Oh, and, oh God, no. Thundercats Roar, 1,100 views. Tied with uh, Live Action Banana Splits movie at 1,100 views. Um... Cool. And even my SpongeBob spinoff video from a year ago almost has uh, 990 views. God damn, that's cool. Uh, I don't always check this out. Oh, cool! The review I did on the Hunter Hunter license, 754 views. All right, I didn't even know that. Wow! I have not been checking the popular uploads on my channel in a while. Wow! Okay, I think I... Alright, that's cool. I, I'm impressed by that. So, yeah, that, that makes me happy. But, uh, yes, this is pretty cool. Uh, so, if you ever want to learn a bit about animation, 
there's uh, ways to do it. It's really cool at this point, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm all for this. This is actually pretty interesting. Uh, the video is simplistic, if anything, but it is in Japanese, so unless you can read kanji, you are not going to understand it, uh, period. But either way, it's still pretty cool. Uh, hopefully, we'll get some at some point then in English. I don't know. Uh, but if you want to check it out, uh, you can literally check it out right from the article. Uh, literally, just go right down to that YouTube video, and there's a... Just go right into the YouTube video that's on there, and boom. The channel's up in the upper left corner. It's got uh, 678 subscribers as of right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm... That's amazing. I'm all for that. That is cool. I... I I like animation. I like learning new stuff. I've been taking this opportunity, being stuck at home, uh, to improve my drawing. And there will be a video going up. At some point, I will show, okay, here's my drawings that I've done. Here's, because I actually found one of my original drawings from a few years ago. I mean, a few years ago. Like, we're talking, I think, 2009, 2010. Either 2009, 2010, or 2011, uh, that really shows my old school, and I have one on my Facebook page that I can use too. Uh, so that'll really help show how much I've improved. Uh, can't wait to show everybody that. I'm actually kind of proud. I mean, I was in the zone on the one picture. I will not deny that. I was in the zone. But uh, yeah, so I'm all for animation channels. I want to teach you more and show you more stuff. I'm all for it. I hope it succeeds well. I hope it gets put in English or at least get subtitles. I would approve subtitles. Alrighty, everybody. That's going to pretty much do it then this week for the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. I'd like to thank you all for sticking around for however the hell long this one was this week. Uh, last week, I was literally one minute under an hour. I was shocked at that. One minute under an hour. I was amazed. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget... Uh, monthly Q&A video is coming up soon. You have at least two more Saturdays. So you, all the questions got to be in. I'm shooting the 23rd, 25th to have the questions in by. Though, so, like I said, that date could change. I don't know. But at least somewhere in between there to have all the questions in. So at least 25th at the latest. Uh, please submit uh, all your questions via comments on my channel. Just make sure you add the... Uh, parenthesis, capital Q, ampersand, which is the w symbol above the 7 on your keyboard. Uh, looks like a weird thing, but if you ever, like, if you have, like, a touch keyboard on a tablet, just, you'll know what I mean. If you go into password mode, or go to a password, what was at the number 7, if you hit the up arrow, if you hit the shift arrow, it is now an ampersand. That's an ampersand. So, parenthesis, Q, ampersand a don't forget to include those in your uh thing and close off the parentheses so basically parentheses capital q ampersand a parentheses and i'll know that it's for the q a i usually go from the last q a video to the date that i have cut off for it and i'll take any questions on there so long as they don't violate the two things that i will not talk about on this channel so feel free to submit your questions i will gladly answer anything as best to the best of my ability uh, so yeah, looking forward to that. Uh, I am looking forward to eventually getting the GBU back up. As you know, I had to delay that till next year. So look forward to that at some some point next year. It's like gonna be like end of May, beginning of June next year. So look forward to that. Uh, I got Andrew Rant's videos you can watch here on my channel. Andrew discusses videos you can watch. I got a new one that should be coming up on Monday. If I remember right, I did make it. I just want to make sure that I'm comfortable with putting it up. And that I didn't already do it. And I just having a lapse of momentary lapse of judgment and sanity. But other than that, thank you all for tuning in. Don't forget to ring that notification bell to make sure that you know when new videos are dropping. Hit the thumbs up or thumbs down button. Let me know. It's good for the algorithm. Good for me anyway. At least I know what works and what doesn't work. And don't forget, leave a comment. Say hi. Let me know how your week went. How are you handling and coping with the uh, stay at home if you're still stuck in one of those? Or how everything else is going? Let me know. And until next time, I'm Andrew Rhodes. This has been the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast on the Web Designer 18 YouTube channel. And I am out of here. Catch us next time. 
Peace out, everybody.